It was a nearly cloudless sky over Booth Bay Harbor on a Saturday morning as passengers boarded the Island Lady for a five-hour cruise. Among the passengers, there was a sense of anticipation. They were about to embark on the Maine Audubon's 41st annual Bald Eagle excursion. Before boarding, we got a chance to talk to Dick Anderson, former executive director of Maine Audubon, and the person who started the Bald Eagle excursion 41 years ago. This trip started when to see, watch waterfall, to see the geese and the ducks in Miramini Bay. And uh, oh, that was when there were no eagles. I mean, they were, we might, some years we might see an eagle, but uh, we went for the first 10 or 15 years of this trip seeing one eagle a year or maybe two. This has now changed. In recent years, passengers on the bald eagle excursion have regularly had 20 to 40 sightings of eagles. Dick explained why this has changed. A lot of the problems with uh, with eagles in the 60s and 70s was uh, pesticide spraying, particularly DDT, which had a really negative effect on the egg thickness of eagles. And we didn't have any eagle uh, eagle reproduction. I mean, we had uh, at that time we had about 14 nesting eagles in Maine, nesting pairs of eagles. Now we have over 500. Uh, it's pretty amazing. And the Audubon Society was really one of the key uh, organizations to ban the use of DDT in the state of Maine. The island lady left Booth Bay Harbor and crossed Sheepskit Bay. Immediately we saw a number of waterfowl as Dick Anderson, Bob Bittenbender, and Eric Hines pointed out the wildlife and provided plenty of information about the birds we were seeing and their habitat. First osprey of the day is soaring along the right shoreline. We traveled up the Sassanoa River and saw our first bald eagle before ever reaching Merry Meeting Bay, as well as cormorants, herons, ospreys, and a variety of ducks. Merry Meeting Bay at this time of year in Hanses Bay and in uh, Arousic are places where large numbers of waterfowl concentrated this time of year because of the wild rice. There's no place in New England that has as much wild rice growing as in Mary Meaning Bay and on this trip. You're going to see thousands of acres of wild rice growing. And the rice has already fallen off the plants and it sinks to the bottom. And that's what waterfowl, that's what attracts waterfowl to Mary Meaning Bay. So we should see thousands of, of mallards and black ducks and um, pintails and green winged teal and blue winged teal. I mean, it's a, it's a great opportunity to see birds. but it's a, it's sort of long distance seeing birds. It's not, the, this trip is identifying birds from long distances. We then entered the Kennebec and got to see Bath Iron Works up close, then passed under the Bath Bridge and up to the Merry Meeting Bay. Although many of the sightings were at a distance, we did spy this pair of eagles on a branch thanks to our guides and got to see several osprey nests up close. Aside from the many bird sightings, it was a beautiful day to enjoy the sights while traveling along the river. We turned around when we reached Richmond and headed back by going straight down the Kennebec to the ocean, passing Popham on our right and Reed State Park on our left. It's true that the sheltered tidal waters of the mid-coast offer some of the most pleasant and scenic cruising to be found anywhere, plus excellent wildlife watching. This is Andrea Handel for Community Update.